I'm live. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me see. Yes, I am live. Okay. So welcome to this, I don't know, exploration of hugging. Um, like the indefinable art of hugging. Um, it's funny, actually, like I looked at this before this live and we've been hugging and hugged ever since we were little kids. And yet there is so much more to it than just wrapping our arms around each other. And my question yesterday um, was, how are you with hugs? Are you like a hug lover, a hug hater, hug curious, hug hesitant, hug explorer? And most people said they are hug lovers, except when they're not. And I get that it's true for so many of us. We are hug lovers, except when we're not, when we're hug haters. And we are hug haters, except when we're not. And for a brief moment, are hug lovers. And I also get that the more aware, like the more we go on this path of consciousness and awareness, the more we really become like hug curious, hug explorers. Every single hug is different. Every single, it's like every single meeting and moment in a hug is different. So maybe maybe that would be more correct. Maybe we're all, we all love hug exploring or hate hug exploring, except when we're not. So um, I think that we love or hate hugs depending on what's going on for us at that time, um, who we're hugging, obviously, big thing, who we're hugging. Um, I mean, it's much easier for some people to hug their kids or their pets or their lover and maybe not so easy to hug a friend or a colleague. You know, it really depends on what kind of context you're moving and what you're used to. And I think it also depends on who we are in the moment of the hug. I think so much of the hug comes from not from any of those surrounding circumstances or who it is we're hugging. It comes from who are we at the moment of the hug? Like, who are we in that moment? Um, it's it's kind of like the hug is an energetic check-in. <laughs> It's of who you are, who the person you're hugging are, where you're at energetically, and who you are for each other in that moment. And you can notice it, you know, you know that, like, if you hug your dad, it's very different than if you hug a lover. And if you hug a friend, you know, different friends have different energies. So we do know all that. But when I was looking at this today, I was looking at how much it comes from who we're being in the moment of the hug, who we are choosing to be, who we are willing to be, who we're able to be at that moment. And I do get like in a hug, if you're willing and able, but you all are, if you're listening to this, um, you can get a whole download of about that person and about yourself. So are your barriers up or down? Um, do the person have an agenda? Do you have an agenda? Do you have an agenda with your hug? Would you like it, you know, to go somewhere in some way, fix something or maybe lead to something? Um, do the person you're hugging have a need? Do they want something for you? Do they have an expectation? Do you have an expectation or a need of that person? All of that is in that hug. It's in that split second of the hug. Is there a sense of like invitation that you're aware of to stay longer or is there like stay away, <laughs> go? Well, again, all of that, like in a split second of that hug, you will know all of that. So it's a great source of energetic information. It's like one of the quickest, easiest and not so weird way of receiving energetic information about yourself and the other person. Um, 
And I would say also this like boom that you get it in a split second is also why for some people, the hugs are so intensely intimate without, you know, even if it's just, you know, wrapping your arms around each other, but because you're getting this energetic download of yourself and of the person and of the moment, it's near like, I don't really want that. That's too much. Um, and if you're listening to this, you are energetically aware. And therefore, you are capable of receiving energetic information in a hug. You may not be aware of it yet, and you may not have practiced all the subtleties, and it's there if you're willing to receive it. And I have this friend who came over the other day and to run my bars, and she is this wonderful being, and she has like such healing hands and such um, like a like a caring in her whole being. And when we hug, she's at least this time, you know, she's like a wooden pole. And so we had a we talked about it, and she said like sometimes with hugs, I much rather like give a high five. And I so get that because if you are that aware of everything and everyone, and even the slightest shift in the energy in the situation, a hug is like nearly intrusive in that way. So hugging becomes this intimate, energetic, intense moment that if we don't have the tools to handle that, a lot of us instead put up barriers and just don't even want to go there. So why do so many of us still love hugs? Well, I get that it's because a hug with no point of view, no agenda and no expectations, a hug that like has that vulnerability of no barriers, gratitude, it melts any limitation and any separation that we have out of our world again in that split second. And that's why those hugs, we just want to stay there. We, we don't want to go anywhere. We just, we just stay in the hug and just be in that like moment of oneness. And I think those hugs, like when we get those hugs, it's like our vibration, our frequencies, um, they meet like beyond words. And they become so much beyond this reality, something that we be longing for. And we get that sense of that in that moment. That's why uh, hugs from kids are so yummy. They don't function from, you know, all these expectations, agendas, all of that. And it's not until we get a bit older that we add like the judgments, inventions, lies. <laughs> and all of that on top of ourselves and we add the image being hung by an image by the way is not that yummy so really anytime we're hugging somebody or receiving a hug from somebody who functions only from image those hugs are it's like a 2d hug while like a, a, a 3d <laughs> a 3d hug is that hug from beyond this reality that actually function from the five elements of intimacy, gratitude, allowance, trust, vulnerability, and honor. But so anyway, so the, the hugs from a kid that has none of that, that like melts us because they're just like, oh, yummy, I would like to, you know, be with your, you and your vibration and who you're being, even though they're not thinking that, obviously. So some people, um, are able to give those kind of hugs. And I think those are the moments, those hugs are some of the moments where we are shown the possibility of oneness and not, we're, we're shown the possibility of oneness in us. Like, I think whether you're a hate, love, hate, no, hug hater or hate, hug lover, 
Nearly all of us have at one point or another had a hug that actually had that sense of that it melted us inside. And that melting sense becomes that sense of a possibility of oneness, a possibility of softness, a possibility of no barriers, no separation. And I think that's why we love hugs so much. Even if it's just been that one time yet, even if that's the only one we've had so far, we know now it's possible. And maybe that's why some people even avoid them because they know that's possible. <laughs> so maybe that's another reason we can avoid it if we're not ready for that yet. Um, and I also get that those hugs, those melting hugs, when we're willing to give those hugs, we are like a walking superpower. Because in those moments, when we're willing to give, incapable of giving those kind of hugs, we are being us, like we are being ourselves so much. Because there's no way that hug, that that kind of melting, vibrating oneness hug can come from the image or from a space where we're not being us and being with us. So they may be rare, but at those moments when we're being us and having no needs and no expectations, no judgments, no rejections, <laughs> no rejections or separations, that's our hugs are a superpower at those times. And the key, I think, well, the key possibly <laughs> could be to really tap into the fact that the hug and hugging is a choice. A hug, if a hug is a must, then all of what I just talked about just goes away. Because if it's a must, it doesn't, like all, all the sense of intimacy, all the sense of actually, um, having no need, all of that that we've talked about before, that all, that's not there if it's a must. So so a hug, a, one, a melting hug, has to come from choice, both from if you would like, if you would like to choose to give one, and if you would like to receive one. So what if you were willing to know and show it can be energetically willing to know and show when you're willing to receive a hug and when you're willing and inviting people to get one from you. Just saying. And I think I'm going to sign off there. Um, and if you have anyone around you, check in and see if maybe take a moment and you can even actually let's do like a mini 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 practice at the very end so if you're with somebody right now it can be your enjoyable other a kid a dog somebody you're fighting with <laughs> i don't know if there's anybody there just check if you would like to give them a hug or if you would like to have one and you can just, you can use one of those go-to tools, which is really to put your hands on two points of your body, like maybe over your heart and on your stomach, and then feel your feet on the floor. You can close your eyes. And what you're doing is really saying hi to you. Where am I right now in this moment, in these 10 seconds? Just hello, body. And it is the body that's hugging, you know. It's you too. It is the body. And just check in with you where you are right now, who you are right now, because that changes all the time, who we are. And then see if you would like a hug with somebody around you. And it's not better if you do want to hug somebody and it's not better if you don't 
What if hugs are just one of our infinite choices? Bye.